Good morning. Happy Saturday. I'm going into work today. So I figured I would uh, make a quick video where I normally film the sun is shining brightly, as you can tell by the uh, blown out windows. You may also notice I have a new, uh, new uh, cell phone, so there's no black spots on the screen. And I think it's a much clearer picture whether or not um, YouTube uses the same definition as it's recording in. I don't know. Don't really care either. Um, so interesting, interestinger and interestinger stuff is going on in the world of politics. And I don't really care about that as much as I care about what's going on in the world of censorship. And censorship is just rearing its ugly head. Uh, back when uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and Alex Jones were kicked off of uh, social media and YouTube and things like that, I was concerned because obviously if they start doing this to people with large followings, then you're not safe and I'm not safe. But I, I never thought I would see the day when a private company would, I, I don't know exactly what the term is. They, they removed, suspended, banned Donald Trump's account. He is whether you love him or hate him, he is currently the president of the United States. He will remain the president of the United States until Joe Biden is sworn in, at which time he will cease being the president of the United States. But think about it. <laughs> A private company has chosen to ban him off of their platform. That same private company maintains a POTUS account, president of the United States account, and they maintain one for each president. So I, I, I believe they have one for the acting one and then like they uh, passed presidents. I think Obama still has a, maybe he doesn't, I don't know. I'm not a Twitterer, so I don't know. But they're now censoring the actual official president of the United States account. Now for a long time, I've been somewhat concerned in that many um, governmental agencies use Twitter to communicate. Many of them do. Like uh, if you see, I get alerts on my phone sometimes uh, about like missing kids and stuff. And it's a Twitter link. And I don't have Twitter installed on my phone. I don't have a Twitter account. So, blah, you know, but uh, that's that's what the government, the particular government agency that sent out that uh, notice decides to use. I think uh, most... Most um, government agencies have an official account on Twitter. It seems to be pretty common. So it does seem to be an official communications platform. And I was I was unimpressed with what was that night communications or night media publications or whatever versus Donald Trump, where uh, a a reporter sued Trump because on his personal account, which he does use for, um, you know, official tweets, uh, she was blocked, which meant she could still read everything that he had to say, but she could not respond to everything he had to say, which is, which is insanely weird. I have never, I have never seen a situation where, um, someone could demand to be platformed by you they, I never, I've never just seen it where they could demand access to your audience and a court would uphold it. Uh, but the court thought, you know, that, um, the answer to speech you don't like is more speech. And, uh, and so she has some sort of a constitutional right to access Trump's specific audience by replying to his tweets, which again, I, I disagree with the, with the legal reasoning behind, but but I was more or less okay with it if uh, the president can't block someone. Um, you know, it preserves freedom of speech. I mean, it at least it it shows that there is some sort of a protection for your speech on on Twitter. And then and then Twitter goes ahead and just blocks the entire president of the United States account. Which I mean, if it if it was a violation of her rights for Trump to block her from his account, wouldn't it 
also be a violation if Twitter blocked her from his account. I, it just seems like it would. I, I, I would be interested to see what a particular court's reasoning would be in upholding that or in allowing uh, Twitter to to suspend Donald Trump's account and to not allow uh, the various Twitterites, Twitter users, whatever they're called, tweeters, yeah. to uh, have access to his information um, because of their unilateral decision that his tweets are bad, you know, orange man bad. Therefore, we can't allow you to see what orange man has to say. Now, I think uh, someone commented uh, Aeon Musk, or I don't remember exactly what his username is, but he commented something along the lines of, you know, I, I, I get tired of explaining to people that uh, Twitter is a, a private corporation and they can censor as much as they want. It's their platform. They can do whatever they want on it. There is no First Amendment protection. And again, as that uh, night media communications or whatever it was, that it was a, I think it was a First Circuit Court of Appeals case. Um, but that was a case that uh, definitely stated that there was some First Amendment protections on Twitter. Um, in insofar as, <laughs> God, just almost hit the person walking behind her. Her car. Anyway, um, there are some First Amendment protections, at least if you are blocked from Donald Trump's personal Twitter account. Maybe, maybe it would also apply to being blocked from other um, governmental figures, Twitter accounts, etc. Who knows? I mean, it just seems like it just seems like there are are two standards to everything nowadays. But, um, so he says that, you know, he gets tired of explaining that it is not protected First Amendment activity to post on a private social media platform. My, my immediate response to that was, well, there is a difference between can and should. Can Twitter censor? Yes. Should they? No. There is a difference, a qualitative difference in the argument. And I think most people are of the mindset that Twitter shouldn't be able to censor. Or at least those people who aren't so insane as to think that the censorship is going to stop with Donald Trump. It didn't stop with Milo Yiannopoulos. It didn't stop with Alex Jones. It's not going to stop with Donald Trump. I mean, uh, I've heard reports of 60,000 people being banned off Twitter in the past couple of days. So, um, I mean, it's coming. And, you know, you, you think you think that you're going to be spared because you're uh, along the lines, you're along party lines or what have you. You have to remember that, that eventually they come for you too. The nebulous, they, they come for you too. Uh, in every, in every revolution, they, they have always butchered their own side as well. You know, they want to uh, remove people who were influential in the revolution because they don't want those same people who know how to be influential in a revolution to be influential in the next revolution against them. It's, it's par for the course. It is what happens. It has been played out in history time. And again, they will come for you. They will come for you and you will lose your voice. And the fewer people who are left there to defend your voice, the easier it's going to be for them to take your voice. So if you don't, if you don't defend the rights of people who have different political opinions from you to speak their minds, you don't have to listen to them. You don't have to, you don't have to sign up to listen to Alex Jones or, uh, AOC or whoever you particularly disagree with. But if you don't defend their right to speak, then, well, eventually they'll come for you too. I mean, the, it, it's classic, you know, first they came for blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I was scared, so I didn't say anything. And then blah, blah, blah. And then I was scared. They didn't say anything. And then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. Uh, you know, it's, it's a truism. It just happens. So anyway, um, yeah, so we should be concerned about it. Everybody should be concerned about it. You should be concerned about it. I should be concerned about it. Um, but finally, there, I mean, there, there may, Twitter may, in fact, eventually, by a reasonable court, be found to be a public platform. 
they may be found to be the traditional the traditional town square, the replacement for the traditional town square. There's a case I read in law school, and I'm probably going to butcher this. I want to say it was uh, Marsh, Marsh v. Alabama, Marsh v. Alabama, Marsha. Anyway, uh, it was a it was a pretty old case. Apparently, they had, or maybe they still have. I don't know. Um, company towns in Alabama, and uh, this particular this town was owned by a company. Like everything was owned by a company. The houses were owned by the company. The streets were owned by the company. There was, there was a, a shopping district that was owned by the company. Everything was owned by the company. But in every other aspect, it was the identical to a normal town, to a, to a non company owned town. And the, uh, the court, the United States Supreme court, God, I wish I remember that. It's something like Marsh or Marsh. I should look it up, but I'm not going to stop. I've already, I'm already like 11 minutes into this. Uh, but anyway, the Supreme Court held that you know it's if if this was a municipal, if this if this land was owned by the people by a municipality, a municipal corporation, then it would be it would be simple. Obviously, you can't restrict. Oh, oh, the, the restriction on free speech. Um, I want to say it was a Jehovah's Witness or some other, or some other, uh, it was a religious, some, some gal wanted to, it must be Marsha. Some gal wanted to uh, hand out pamphlets, um, religious propaganda, religious, you know, tracks, whatever, whatever you want to call them. She wanted to hand them out and they said no. And they said, you got a GTFO. And she said, but this is my first amendment right to uh, proselytize about my religion. And they said, uh, okay, how about you get arrested for trespassing? And the, they arrested her. And so it became the state of Alabama who was prosecuting it because it was the the crime of criminal trespass. So so the court said, you know, if, if this was, if the town was owned by the people and not by a corporation, if it was owned by a municipal corporation instead of a private business corporation, then there would be no question that her First Amendment rights were violated. You can't just have a blanket restriction on um, distributing religious paraphernalia, religious tracts, religious, you know, proselytizing. You can't, you can't just blanket ban religious speech in, in a town. And so... Because this this corporation had, had basically taken the role of, taken the place of the municipal corporation, this business corporation stood in the shoes of a municipal corporation in every aspect, um, it had to abide by the First Amendment. And using that line, using that chain, that thought pattern, Twitter is now taking the place of traditional mail. It's taking the place of, um, like, by traditional mail, I mean, by, like by mass mailing um, pamphlets, it's taking the place of standing on a street corner and shouting, you know, the end is nigh or, you know, um, the the, gov- the governor is a lizard person or whatever you want to shout on the street corner. It has taken that place. It has placed itself in that particular role. Possibly the same with Facebook. Um, I, I think most government entities have Facebook pages of some sort. So using that line of, of cases, maybe, maybe we can get to the point that that glare from the sun is really killing me. Um, maybe we can get to the point where the, where a court will step up and say, Hey, look, you know, these are important. These particular platforms are important for free speech and they're so important for free speech that that people need to have first amendment protections while they are on these platforms. That, that is not an, an unreasonable position for a court to take. It's not unreasonable for a court to say these, these are now basically the town square. These are now basically a replacement for the traditional public forum. And so they, because they held themselves out to the public because they allowed this kind of discourse because they have basically usurped that role they need they need to have uh, protections in place for the for speakers for free speech. So that's 
that's not an unreasonable position for a court to take. And it's backed up by, <laughs> Jesus Christ, have your hand further down your pants. Uh, it's not, it's not a, a position that is too far off of what courts have taken in the past. So <clears throat> we should all be concerned about it. We should also be concerned about it. apparently now they're trying to, uh, they're trying to uh, deplatform Parler, which is an alternative account because Trump uh, threatened, I guess, stated he'd go there, or maybe Hannity said he went there. I, I'm not sure. I do have a Parler account. Um, don't really do much on it, but look at memes. Um, but the I haven't seen anything on in my feed about uh, Trump actually having an account there yet. Um, so I guess we'll see if it does, but, uh, already Google play has deplatformed the, uh, parlor app. Um, Apple is talking about, uh, removing the parlor app from the, uh, Apple store. I don't know what they call it. iTunes store, I guess. I don't know. Um, there, there, there is a lot of, there is a lot of, uh, pressure right now to silence people and, I think we should all be concerned about it because, because just remember, like, <clears throat> just remember that everything that is used by you can be used against you. And who was it? Harry, Harry Reid got rid of the uh, super majority required for uh, confirming um, justices, Supreme Court justices. And uh, Mitch McConnell said, look, this is going to bite you in the ass. And next thing you know, Mitch McConnell is confirming Supreme Court justices without a supermajority. So, you know, I mean, what comes around goes around. Good for the goose, good for the gander. Always, always think of things that way, and and that'll help you out, you know. Eventually, it will come back to bite you in the butt. So, think about it. Censorship is bad. doesn't work. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.